This is the Morning Swim Show for Friday, August 31st, 2012. I'm your host, Tiffany Elias. Today in the Phoenix Monitor is one of the most decorated female Olympians. Joining us from her home in Lafayette, California is Natalie Coughlin. Hey, Natalie, welcome back to the show. Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, so third Olympics. What's life after London like this time around? This time around, it's been pretty good. I really haven't been home. Um, I stayed through closing ceremonies and um, and then, you know, immediately went to um, the mountains with my husband and then had a bunch of, you know, events with my friends here, here in the Bay Area. And then it was my birthday last weekend, so all my best friends and um, we all went to the beach and, and just had a, a wonderful beach weekend. So it's been busy, but it, it's it's been really good busy. Yeah, that sounds really enjoyable. I did see some pictures on Twitter of you out doing some fishing. Yeah. Have, have you just been really trying to enjoy yourself? More vacation over media stuff that a lot of people get pulled into? Yeah, I've been doing a lot of media um, today is, oh my gosh, I'm doing just interview after interview. Um, and then I was in L.A. Uh, earlier this week and um, just try to make the most out of my time there. So when I do do the media stuff, I'm just doing a lot at once and then trying to, you know, bundle them together as much as possible. So it's it's made it more manageable and then I get to have, you know, some, some downtime um, and would, that's been really, really nice. You've been doing this for so long. Has the media stuff really started to wear on you, or are you still just taking it in strides? Uh, it, it doesn't wear on me. It's exhausting, um, and especially now with with Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, there's you know you have to check everything and and stay up to date as much as you can. Um, it, it is tiring sometimes, but it's it's part of the job. You know that's that's. It, that is my job. In addition to swimming and training mm -hmm. and competing, that that that's that's part of it. Well, that's a good way to look at it. So mm -hmm. let's get into the swimming portion of this. Going back to trials, we're trying to make your third push. See if you could defend that title in the hundred backstroke. Mm -hmm. Fell a little bit of short with the competition being unbelievable this time around. But still mm -hmm. made it in the relay, coming out with that bronze medal. What was your take after trials going into London? Um, you know, I didn't have a successful trials, um, and honestly, I didn't have a really good season in general. Um, and that I think just, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I think I just trained a little too hard and didn't focus on recovery nearly as much as I should have. Um, but you know, it is what it is. I was very happy to just go to the to my third Olympics and. Um, to be a part of such an amazing team and it was kind of nice you know not to have the crazy schedule that I had in Beijing and um, in uh, Athens I actually got to to watch a lot of the events and be really present and um, get to enjoy each each of the sessions would you say that's the biggest difference from all past Olympics is just a relax more quote-unquote relaxing schedule it was very relaxed. Um, you know, I was done the first session, and um, I, I didn't know if I was done for a few days. But um, yeah, I, w I was done first session of the first day. So uh, when the Olympics are 17 days long, um, I got to watch a lot and um, and enjoy a lot. Yeah, that makes it a memorable experience. So with that being said, the 400 freestyle relay was proved to be one of the toughest for the American ladies. Still walked away with the bronze medal, which mm -hmm. gives you your 12 medal count, tying you with Dara Torres and Jenny Thompson. Now, as we've seen in previous interviews, you knew of that record that stands uh, tying, tying for the, the top number of medals for any American female swimmer. So with that said, you're tied with two other ladies. What does that mean moving forward? Um, I don't know if that will affect, you know, what the future is for me or not. Um, but I'm I'm still trying to figure out what what I'm doing. I'm gonna explore options outside of the pool, but I, um, you know, I'm still considering doing the World Cup circuit this year. Or, um, you know, I I I love swimming and. Um, I have not made a decision to retire or not to retire um, as of as of now. <laughs> we could probably assume, though, that your training will continue with Terry McKeever if you do continue to to swim. Yeah, I mean, I I've been at Cal for 12 years, and I'm very much 
established in the Bay Area. Um, you know, I am born and raised in the Bay Area, so um, I don't see myself going anywhere. All right, so you just mentioned some exploring some other opportunities. Can you elaborate on that at all? Do you have any idea what those might entail? Um, I don't know how much I could elaborate. I, I definitely um, have thought about a book at some point, like a cookbook. Uh, so uh, I want to explore that a little bit more. Um, my husband and I have, have thought about doing, you know, a swim school. So we're, we're researching that more and more. Um, uh, you know, I, I think everyone expected me to want to have babies right away, and that's not a case. <laughs> so don't worry. I'm not going to uh, have any babies anytime soon. Um, and yeah, I just, I just want to enjoy my, my, my time. And, um, we have some traveling coming up, which I'm really excited about. And, um, you know, I'm going to go to, uh, a, a great white shark dive, um, oh, wow. in, in two weeks, which has been a lifelong goal of mine. And, um, I found, uh, an opening in the schedule at this, at this one, this one place. And, you know, on, on a whim, my husband and I were, were going to go. So uh, we're really excited about that. Yeah, that sounds great. Now, did your husband make it out to London with you as well? He did. He did. He was there um, for the duration of swimming. Um, but, you know, being a swim coach, uh, that's a very, very important time mm -hmm. of the year. So he had to go back um, as soon as swimming was over. Now, being that you were still affiliated with the team, how often were you guys able to see each other? Could you watch the events together or did you have to stay with the USA team? Um, we had to stay with the USA team. Um, you know, the um, honor code is in place, so you, you, you still are, are very much a part of um, the U.S. team and the schedule and the meetings and everything like that. Um, I was able to sneak away um, a, a few times for lunch uh, here or there, but, um, you know, I was, I was still, you know, quote-unquote working, so I would mm -hmm. do either other media obligations um, in between sessions, or, um, and then, I, you know, you have to go to bo both prelims and, and final sessions, so there really wasn't that much time left in the day. But... Um, we kept in touch via Skype. <laughs> yeah, so that was one of the tricky things over in London was communication. Were, did you get a phone while you were over there, or were you just, did you have the connection whenever you had internet? Because that's what I was doing, and it was difficult. Yeah, well, I mean, it was really nice to have Wi-Fi almost everywhere in um, in the venues, uh, so you could keep in touch that way. Um, but I just bit the bullet and used my phone, and uh, I just got the bill, and it wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Well, that's good, because those <laughs> can get ugly. I know. I, I've learned. I've learned from past mistakes. <laughs> All right, so being a veteran, how did the venues compare to to the previous Olympics? They were amazing. Um, the pool, you know, the pool, how much can you really do with the pool? It's 50 meters um, long and there's a warm-up pool and there's locker rooms, things like that. Um, so it was, it was beautiful and it was clean and I thought the, the layout and um, worked really well. But what was so nice was the village having high-rises made the village much smaller. Um, and so there was a lot of walking to do, but it wasn't nearly as far as in Athens or in Beijing. And um, having the tube system, um, in addition to the great you know bus system that we had in the village, was really easy. Um, it, it, everything about London was just easy and uh, enjoyable. It really was. So now the Olympics being over, there's been some talk now moving over to Ryan Lochte that he's considering dancing with the stars, which as we know, <laughs> you were a participant on a few seasons back. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your experience and also can you see Ryan doing something like that or, you know. I could see Ryan participating in reality um, TV for sure. Um, he has such a great personality and I think he would, would love Hollywood. Um, he is, I, I would encourage anyone to do da Dancing with the Stars. I think it's such a great experience that um, it forces you to get out of your comfort zone and um, to really expose, your, you know, your vulnerabilities to the world. And um, it's just a great life challenge. And um, I would do it again in a heartbeat. And if, if he gets the opportunity, I think he should take it. Was it more challenging than one of the hardest practices you've ever done in the pool? Or how does it relate to athletics? 
it's a different challenging. It's definitely, um, it's hard on your body. Um, like it was, it was just hard to be on my feet for so many hours a day in heels. Um, and it was hard on my hips and, 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 um, but it's not like the cardio grueling workout of a swimming workout or lift uh, or weight session. Um, the hardest part of it was just being on camera for endless hours of the day. And, mm -hmm. Um, you know, knowing that, you know, anything, any look, any phrase, any, anything could be edited together to create this story for the reality side of the, the TV show. So, so that was difficult, but that is something that I got used to. Yeah. Well, Natalie, thanks for fitting us into your schedule. I know you're busy and definitely enjoy your traveling that's coming up. Thank you. I, I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> and we look forward to hopefully watching you in some more competition as well. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Natalie. Have a great day. Thanks. You too. All right. Well, that is it for today's Morning Swim Show. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with all the latest news. I'm your host, Tiffany Elias. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.